So here's something most of the books don't talk about. Um, dealing with contact in a helicopter. Uh, I've seen people react in a very wide variety of ways to contact, from flying at it to stopping and looking around to try and figure out what's going on, to climbing to getting down to the deck and almost crashing. Um, there are actually some established uh, methods of reaction to contact uh, used by, uh, at least in my reference, the U.S. military uh, that are fairly tried and true and work pretty well. So the first one being tank, uh, RPG, and small arm responses. Um, first step, immediately turn away from fire towards an area of concealment. That means the second you start taking fire or seeing fire incoming, turn. Head towards a mountain, ridge, woods, anything that you can duck behind and put a physical object between you and the source of the fire. If concealment is not available, make sharp turns of unequal magnitude at unequal interview intervals and small changes in altitude to provide protection until you're beyond effective range. So turn away from the fire. Fly away from the fire and zigzag as unevenly as you can. The idea is to not let anybody get a proper lead on your bird. If some, someone's on the ground shooting at you and they're trying to lead you, if you keep changing randomly, there's no way they're going to be able to get a, a uh, lock. Yes, don't be predictable. Um, and as you're traveling, look for cover you can get behind or keep going until you're out of effective range. There are there are no birds in this game that are strong enough to deal with sustained fire. Um, and especially when you have a cargo of passengers, your job is to keep them safe and get them the hell out of there. Uh, random bullets coming through doors can and will kill your passengers, even if you are protected a little bit by the glass and metal around the cockpit. All right. When you run into large caliber uh, anti-aircraft radar responses, uh, first thing you want to do is dispense chaff. Uh, immediately after dispensing chaff, make a 90 degree turn as is appropriate for the threat. So you're going to bank turn 92. Uh, this puts you at a angle to them that makes it much harder for them to track you and shoot you. Uh, after you've made your turn, don't maintain a straight line of flight uh, or the same altitude for more than 10 seconds. Uh, and begin initiating your second chaff. And once you initiate your second chaff, make another 90 degree turn. Now, Arma 2 is a bit different in this case. Um, I have to do more testing, but from what I've seen, uh, missile guidance and lock-ons don't work how they would normally in real life. The idea in real life with this is that you would be flying, you dispense chaff and make a turn. That puts you away from the chaff. Uh, making it harder for a missile to track you. Hopefully the missile would lock onto the chaff. And this, it seems like the only time chaff is effective is when the missile's really damn close to you. It's... Shall I interdict? Because I've... Yeah, please. I'm, I've already gone through all this with the missiles. Uh, the missiles in armor are like pursuit missiles. In real life, missiles are pursuit missiles, i.e. they will aim to be where you're going. In armor, they will try to basically follow you. You, in knowing this, you have to deploy your flares accordingly, as essentially the flares present another vehicle in the air to the missile. The missile will want to, if this vehicle is in the missile's line of sight or in its path, the missile will instead lock onto the vehicle and ignore the helicopter. So essentially, the only real way in armor to defeat a missile is to have the missile chasing your 6 o'clock whilst you're dispensing chaff and flares. Correct. Um, and then the next rule, uh, as soon as you're in contact with a radar lock or anti-air device, get your ass down to NOE altitude if you're not there already. Uh, this will often defeat the radar lock and uh, prevent them from continuing to fire or from even firing to begin with. When you start hearing that tone, head for the earth if you're not there. Um, Here's a fun one uh, that you don't often get to run into, but I've done it a few times in here and it works, uh, is fighter response. If you run into a fighter, like a MiG, chasing after your bird, um, the first thing you want to do is mask. If you can, get behind something so that they simply can't see you. That's your best defense. 
barring that, the fighter's alone uh, and is diving towards you, the trick is to turn towards them. Don't try and run away. If you run away, you're dead. If you turn towards the fighter and begin to descend against them, you're forcing them into a dive if they wish to continue to engage you. Uh, once they have committed to a steep dive on you, uh, you can make a very sharp maneuver, uh, turning you know to your left or right, and there is no way that they can follow you safely without becoming a lawn dart themselves. As with everything else, continue to get the fuck away from them, mask, do whatever, get to cover. Um, some quick rules about masking that you use when you're uh, trying to avoid uh, fire. Like any time that you have to use masking, whether you're in a Apache or in any kind of attack helicopter and you're masking and unmasking to put fire on a target, if you're just doing recon and masking and unmasking or trying to check if an LZ is safe, uh, never unmask in the same place. You want to unmask. Uh, don't stay unmasked for more than 10 seconds. Uh, it's about your average reaction time. And then when you remask, move over to the new location and come out from that new lo location again. Don't be predictable. Make it so that somebody sees you pop up and pop down. Don't do it in the exact same place or they're going to be sitting there with a the gun pointed right where you were in your toast. Just imagine playing whack-a-mole. Um, right. Uh, the most vulnerable time for a helicopter and crew is during landing and takeoff. That's when you have the least speed and the least maneuverability. Um, if you come under fire uh, of any type, like small arms, uh, locate the direction of fire, apply collective, and use cyclic to bank the aircraft so that the underbelly is exposed to the fire. Essentially, put the bottom of your bird uh, towards the fire. That's some of your best armor right there. Puts a solid object between you and your pass, between you and the fire, uh, for everyone on the bird. Let them shoot up the belly while you try and get away. It also protects your engine uh, and leaves only a couple points exposed on the bird while you're attempting to uh, move away from the fire. Uh, Nostradamus chipped in. Is he going to have to go away for a new course? Um, we're pretty much to the end of this one, yeah. Alright. Any questions about reaction to contact? It's quite a bunch of pilots I've ever seen. Alright. Emergency procedures. This is the fun part. This is where we're going to make a lot of wrecks. The first uh, order of business anytime you are in an emergency situation is to stay calm. Don't start screaming, don't start shouting, don't start yanking on controls. Stay calm. Assess your situation. Figure out what's damaged, how you're going to have to adjust for this, and then immediately announce a mayday on your radio. When you announce your mayday, the most critical thing is your call sign, how you're damaged, and if you can get it in and know this information, where you are. This will allow people to respond to your mayday. If you just yell, blah, 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 going down, that doesn't mean a whole lot. And odds are people are going to only find you when they find a smoking wreckage a few hours later. In the case of engine power loss, the correct response is what is called an auto-rotation. Uh, when you begin an auto rotation, as stated before, announce your mayday component loss location. Begin your descent uh, with a turn if necessary if you need to head towards something. Um, you basically want to start getting the bird down to the ground as soon as you can. Um, you're not going to have much choice of this, but you also don't want to allow the bird to go below 80 knots uh, in speed, or I guess 80 kilometers per hour. That's right. Was that the measurement in here? Uh, kilometers, yeah. So, if you keep your speed above uh, indicated 80 in your bird, uh, you'll maintain a decent amount of control. You start getting below that, and you're going to start having a really hard time managing the bird, and it's just going to want to flop down on the ground. Below 80 is when you become a rock, essentially. Uh, once you get to between 50, 75 feet above the ground, uh, 
adjust your cyclic and essentially start flaring uh, if you want to make a smooth progressive landing. You know, imagine your, your glide slopes uh, when you're approaching for a landing. Keep your speed above 80. Uh, just before you're getting close to touching down, you want to start flaring and killing your speed uh, so that you're going to touch down nice and soft. This really just requires practice. A bird without an engine is a whole different thing to fly. Um, if you flare too soon um, and slow down too much, you're just going to drop like a rock into the ground. It's always better to roll on in these cases than it is to uh, try and land with no speed. Remember, your engine's gone. We don't really care about the rest. We just want to make our landing as smooth as possible so that we don't hurt ourselves or the passengers inside the vehicle. Um, as I said before, all these birds are equipped uh, to simulate uh, engine loss. So what we're going to do is first we're going to have somebody with enough balls to go up and demonstrate an auto hover while we watch from the ground. Oh, Chuck Collins hit already. Oh, this is going to end badly. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, Chuck, you're not exempt from not going into the book if you fuck this up. Yay. Up, Chuck, can you do me a favor though and do it in the Blackhawk? Yeah. Flight characteristics of the little bird are quite a bit different. And yes, yeah, so also take note of what Impulse said. When you lose the engine, in most cases you also lose the tail rotor. So uh, you will sometimes find that you'll be spinning as you come in for the final flare. That's only in the case of a explosion or catastrophic damage to both components. If the uh, if your blades are still spinning, as we talked about earlier, through the gearboxes, your tail rotor will continue to spin unless it is destroyed. Unfortunately, 99% chance in army you will lose both. Yep, that's right. What he's essentially saying is if you decrease your throttle, so immediately when you lose the engine, you zero the throttle. And what he essentially means is that you commit, basically remove the ball. Yeah. But the talk. Hmm. Essentially, the torque doesn't come into play then until the cyclic is... Sorry, not cyclic. Yeah. You use different terms when it Mongo and he annoys me now. What? Mm -hmm. You don't know collective and cyclic? No, I know that, but um, you, normally in armor I refer to simpler terms because it's simple physics. I.e. angle of attack. I'm just simply damn saying that when you lose it, you lose it. Alright, uh, what altitude do you want me to be at? Just run in and do it. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Just kill your engine and bring her in. Alright, I'm bringing it around. I'll be coming from the uh, south. Yeah, we can see. Everybody stand back. <laughs> Aim for the runway, well, not our face. Alright, here we go. Ready? Speed kill is down 108. Killing it now. Mayday, mayday. Raven lead. Main rotor failure. Coming in. Approximate location. LZ Romeo. Bang. That was hard. Yeah, that would have been right, that. I don't, no, I, I have no damage whatsoever. Other than yeah, the I'm uh, not happy with engine and rotor. <laughs> Alright, we'll do it again. Alright, well, let's... I actually would rather get people up in the air. Yeah, um, go on, man. We're going to do this in groups of three. Um... Each instructor is going to ride along with somebody, and we're going to be orbiting the airfield, and we will kill your engine on you, so that you have to react appropriately. Um, Rich, come with me. Up, Chuck, in, uh, Death Strike, grab somebody and uh, pick a bird. Impulse, I'm fairly uh, certain you know how to do this, so I'll be an Andre's bird. Alright, so we'll start with Rambo for me. 
Rambo. All right. Andrew, get in your bird as pilot. Basically, though, guys, you'll be following up, up Chuck's path, and you'll be aiming to put it down on the runway. Well, if you can. If not, you fail. Might All right, we got any particular uh, flight order? Yep, you should be able to repair it from outside or abort simulation inside, and it will repair any damage. I already did that, so it should be good to go. All right, um, Rich, you're in here with me, right? 